Hi, happy Sunday. Today I'm going to be doing a review of The Paul Bearers Club by Paul Tremblay. This was published on the 15th of July 2022 in the UK and it's a psychological thriller and it was something different and something a bit weird and I really enjoyed it. So I hope you enjoy this review. If I had to sum up The Paul Bearers Club in two words, I think I would call it hauntingly beautiful. It was a really bizarre read. The concept of the book is a character called Art Barbara, not his real name, is writing a memoir and he the memoir is being read by someone else and they're leaving all their annotations and notes. And the book basically follows Art Barbara from school through to creating the Paul Bearers Club which is a club where they go to the local funeral home on a weekend and for people who have no relatives and no friends they just are at the funeral so the person isn't buried alone and I think that's really sweet what a sweet idea the book features one of the best unreliable narrators I have read for a long long time I love the concept of unreliable narrators that's one of my favorite things in thriller books or just books in general and the character of art barbara was so weird and with the annotations going along with it by this other person you really question everything he says and that was a lot of fun but it was also really odd there was a lot of things that art barbara went through in the book and you get to the end and you're a bit like hmm did that really happen were you lying? Um, and I just thought that was a really interesting concept and it was executed really well. This book has so many pop culture references and that was one of the things that I really loved about it. On page two, there was a reference to Cellar Door, which instantly makes me think of Donnie Darko. I know that it's probably technically a nod to Tolkien because he was the one that said Cellar Door is the most beautiful word in the English language, but I prefer Donnie Darko to Tolkien, so I'll take that as a Donnie Darko reference. There was also a Stephen King reference, a Scooby-Doo reference. I think towards the end of the book, there was a Twilight reference, um, but that might have just been me reaching and hoping that it was a Twilight reference. There was also a bit where the person annotating the book, who's called Mercy, and um, she makes a reference to the big sleep or the little sleep. And I thought, oh, that's a nod to, Tremblay's previous books, The Little Sleep and No Sleep Till Wonderland. So I thought that was really cool. And they were incorporated really well. Um, it wasn't a bit like, oh, just reading along and suddenly Stephen King. It was subtly done. And I was deliberately going in and looking for these references and hoping they jumped out to me. So that's why I think I noticed so many. Um, so don't think it's gonna like take you out of the story or be a bit jarring because I think it worked really well. So there's a character called Mercy and she is the person who is going through and annotating the memoir that Art Barbara has written and I think Mercy was also a really interesting character. Talking of unreliable narrators, there's a lot of what Art says versus what Mercy says that clash and you don't really know who's telling the truth and I think it's down to yourself to kind of figure it out. I think this book is a really good example of toxic friendships, which isn't something I've ever really come across in a book before. You have quite a few books that are about like toxic relationships, toxic family members, but not really friendships where you want to be friends badly, but you just clash and you make each other angry and you make each other fall out. And that was really interesting to read about. Um, again, it's not something I've really ever seen before, so I thought it was fun to read about a new topic. I didn't come to a decision at the end about who the most toxic person was between Art and Mercy. I think they're both as bad as each other at various points in the novel and I'm curious as to if you've read the book, if you have an opinion on who you think the worst of the two were, but I think they both at many points in the novel riled each other up and deliberately poked each other the wrong way. But it made for a good story, so it was worth it in the end, I guess. <laughs> if you haven't read the book, skip this bit because it's kind of about the ending, so there should be a little bar on the bottom of the screen, so just skip to where that bar ends and you'll be fine. Um, 
you've been warned. I cannot believe how sad the ending of this book was. I did have a little cry and I came out of it with so many emotions. I felt angry, I felt frustrated, I felt sad. You never really get a clear answer of what was true in the book and that was a little bit frustrating but in a really good way. I was kind of pleased. I didn't want there to be an explanation. I didn't want there to be an oh yeah Art was seeing all this crazy stuff because he was like schizophrenic or something like that. No it, it wasn't that boring. You, it's left up to you to decide why he is that way and I personally think he genuinely could see all that stuff. I think he did have a link to the supernatural world that no one else does and I think he just didn't know how to deal with that. Based on that it did remind me of A Cosmology of Monsters which was one of my favourite books of last year in which the main character can see what others can't and he's basically trying to figure out his life in a way that makes him normal and not a bit too out there when he can see monsters. And I think this book covers a similar thing. So if you read A Cosmology of Monsters and enjoyed it for the psychological aspect, then you'll definitely enjoy this. Um, but I just thought it was so well done. The ending was just so good. Yeah, it was good. Um, and that's the end of the spoilers. So you're safe now. <laughs> There were a lot of moments in this book where Art talks about how sad he is or how lonely he is and how much of an outsider he feels and I think um, Paul Tremblay did a really good job of putting those feelings into words. I feel like it's quite common for us to feel a bit sad and a bit lonely and maybe feel like we're the only person in the world that's ever felt that way. Um, and no one would understand if we tried to talk about it and I think he does such a good job of explaining those feelings and explaining how isolated they can make you feel from everyone else. From a, a mental health standpoint I think this book was really powerful just with the way it approached it. Um, so it did make it a bit sad in some places because it was a bit like oh I feel for Art, he's like having a tough time and it kind of tugged on your heartstrings but I think having Mercy going through and annotating Art's memoir did help bring some humour to it um, so Art throughout the book constantly calls it a memoir and it gets to the point where Mercy just crosses it out and she's like a novel, it's a novel, you're writing a story, you're making a lot of this up and I thought it was really funny, it got to a point where I was just like ah, every time I read it because it was just so frequent but it's kind of that fun humour in contrast with these really awful events going on that make you a bit like what? and it spins your head a bit and you feel a bit bad for finding the funny moments funny because there is a lot of bad stuff going on but that was really cool and I really enjoyed it. I didn't really know what to expect going into this book. I hadn't read the blurb, I hadn't read any reviews, I knew that I was probably going to enjoy it and I just wanted to go into it blind, I wanted to go in with the unexpected and I do think that this may now be one of my top reads for 2022, certainly in the second half of the year. It was really good, it was it was so different to anything I've read before and I think that's why I enjoyed it so much and I hope you enjoyed this review. <laughs> And if you've read the book let me know what you think. I hope you enjoyed this review and I hope it's made you want to read this and I hope you have a lovely rest of your weekend and I'll see you next week. Thank you, bye!